Hello, my name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to read and write Hindi, and we are also here because we want to learn how to read and write Urdu. We're going to do both at the same time. As I explained my first day yesterday, on day number one, today is our day number two. As I explained yesterday, that uh, I always wanted to learn how to read and write Hindi. I never learned it before. And I want to relearn how to read and write Urdu, a language that I've been out of touch, out of touch with for over 40 years. I want to relearn it. So yesterday we learned a few letters. We learned eight of them. I'm going to quickly go over them. We learned Alif. I'm going to first recite them in, as, it, as, uh, as they are called in Urdu. Alif, Be, Pe, Te, Meem, Re, and Dal. Notice I skipped this one because this is not a letter. This is a stop. This is a letter in Hindi. This is a letter in Hindi, but it, uh, no equivalent sound exists in Urdu. So the best that we can do is put T and a R together, which sounds like tar to me, but it's not tar, it's tr, tr. We don't have that sound, therefore we don't have the letter. So in Hindi we have a, b, p, t, m, tr, r, and h. Let's introduce a new letter today, shall we? The letter that we are going to introduce is called Noon. What is it called? It's called Noon. And it's the letter N. No. No. And it looks like this. It is a round thing and then a dot goes inside. Let's write the first word, shall we? Here's the first. So when, when we have a Noon, when we have a Noon and he wants to join Aleph, Aki Matra in Hindi is very simple. You take your N, you take your N, and you put Aki Matra next to it, and that's it, you're done. But how do you do it in Urdu? So when you join them together, first thing you do is you write this one very small. It's very small, like this, and then you put an Alif. Now, that becomes now. That's how they join. It's no longer that huge, it becomes tiny. No. So here's the first word. Nam, na, m. We already learned the letter M. Meme, it's called in Urdu. Meme, we learned it. Meme, nam, as in name. Nam. Nam means name. There's another word, very simple one. Na, na. Na, na. As in grandfather, your maternal grandfather, na, na. We learned the letter dal last time, the, and we wrote dada last time. Dada is in grandfather, your paternal grandfather. This is your maternal grandfather. Let's carry on. Here's another interesting word. There's na, and then dal alif da. Dal alif da, which is the da sound. So, so far we have na, da, and then no, na, da. But how do you know which letters join in what way and which letters do not? I don't have a simple answer for it, it's just something you have to know. Just like when you're learning English language, each word has a spelling that you have to memorize. And some of the spellings are very weird. How do you know it? You simply have to memorize. Same thing here. You just have to know which letters join in what form and which letters don't. There is no trick to it. So here, Noon and Alif is going to join becomes Na, but Dal and Alif do not join. Neither, neither does Neither does the noon with the alif. So dal and alif and noon are going to be by, them, be by themselves. And it becomes na, da, no, na dan, na dan, na dan is in naive, childlike, innocent, na dan. Here's the other one. Alif, and then this is pa, and then na. Apna, apna. Except when you're writing, you don't stop in the middle of it to write the darts there, you just continue. And you just have to come back and remember where the darts go. There's, there are three darts there, the, for P, for P, right here, three darts there, for P, up, now, up, now. There are three of them, one, two, and three. And there's two darts. Up, now, as in R's. Up now. 
po, po, no, up, no, up, no. Oh, there's a word that I just thought of, but we can't write it. The word that is coming to my mind right now is sapna. Sapna is in dream. But we can't write sapna because we don't know how to write sir. We don't. We have not learned how to write the letter S in Hindi or Urdu. We'll get to that in a, when the time comes. Apna. Here's the other one. A, na, r. Anar. Anar is a fruit. Anar. A, na, r. Anar. Let's do one more. A, na. Remember this letter we learned last time for day number one. This letter is called mud. This not letter rather this sign. This sign is called mud. It's called mud. And what does it do? It converts. It converts a into an a. You see, in Hindi, it's very easy. If you have a, if you have a. And you want to convert it to a, you just put a aki matra. It becomes a. Like this. Which is just aki matra. You just put a line, it becomes a. a. Well, the same thing happens in Urdu. We have a straightforward line for alif. But what do we do with the alif itself? Alif is an exception. Mud goes only on alif and no other letter. And what does it do? It converts a into an a. It's called mud. Alif mud a. That's how it's read. Alif mud a. Noon alif na, a na, that's how we read it. A na, a na, as in to come. Is another word? B, ta, b, ta, na, batana. B, ta, na, batana. Batana as in to tell, to tell something. Is the last one? Na. And then ro, re, nar, nar, right here, re, nar is in fire, what we call in Urdu, ag, ag, let's do another one, na, po, Na. Po. Na. Napna. Napna is into measure. To measure something. Napna. Na. Po. Na. Napna. It's a very simple one. Na. No. Na is in bread. Na is a kind of a bread. And here's our last one. No. Ro. Mo, this is a ro, right here, this ro, right here, right here. No, ro, mo, norom. Norom as in soft, not hard, norom. So that was it. We're going to move on to the second word on our list, which is this uh, second letter, next letter rather, which is jim, right there, number 10. The next letter that we're going to learn is called, it has a name obviously, it's called Jim. It's the letter J in English language. J. English language letter J is what we're going to learn. And it looks like this. Maybe it does not look like that. There we go. J. J. And in, in Urdu it looks like this. Pay attention. Like that, and then tummy. One more time. Like this, straight line, and then circle, and then a dot inside it, in the tummy. And it's called jeem. This letter is called jeem. It's called jeem. Now when jeem, when jeem joins the aleph, of course it's going to become ja. Again, in Hindi it's very straightforward. You just put Aki Matra, you're done. But in Urdu, it gets a little tricky. So I'm going to rewrite it. So what's going to happen is that this jim here, first of all, if you know, you can, 
if you know that it's going to join it with alif, you don't write it so huge in such a huge manner, and you don't write that high. You have to start lower. So here's a jim, the regular jim, but you see I'm writing it lower because I know I'm going to join the alif neck to it. So you take your jim, which has a dot inside, and then the alif goes here. Alif goes here. And everything else that you see at the bottom here disappears. Everything else disappears. And it looks like this. See, we're going to do this letter right here. This is our jim, and then alif. And that's a jaw. Jaw. That's how the jim joins alif. Jaw. Let's write some letters, shall we? I didn't mean letters, I meant words. Let's write some words. And this is called jim. We don't need the English letter, obviously. Jim. Not jam, jim. It's called jim. Let's write the first word, shall we? Ja na jana jana is to go. Is another one? Jata 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 is in is going. Here's the next one. Re alif ra and j alif ja raja. Ra ja raja is in monarch king. Ra, Jo. When Jim does not join, it takes the entire form and it looks like this Raj. Raja. Raja is in kingdom. Raja is the king. There's another one. Alif Mat A. We just talked about it. Alif Mat A. Jim Alif Ja. A Ja. A. Ja, Aja is in come. Since we have Raja and we have Raj, let's put a Taj here. Taj, Taj, Ta, and Jim by itself. Taj. Taj. What's the Taj? Taj is the crown. Taj is the crown. Let's do one more. J, Alif, Ja. Oh, we can't do one more because I don't think we have learned the letter L yet. So we can do this, this one. Let's do this one. Ja, J alif ja, P alif pa, and then noon. Japan. Jo, ja, po, pa, and then no. Japan. Japan. Well, you know what Japan is. That was the end of the letter J. The next letter we have on our list. It's a very important letter. Is this letter right here, number 11, which is called Wow. It serves as the letter V. Wow. What is it called? It's called Wow, like this. It's this letter V. And, it's, it's, and the name is Wow. And before we go any further, let's talk about V and a B. You see how similar they are? The only difference is that the B has a line inside it. This is letter V and this is letter B. W and B. Don't get confused. Wow. It's called wow and it looks something like this. And before I before we go any further, let me make you understand that wow here, here we are going to use wow strictly as a letter. And what do we mean by that, strictly as a letter? Because wow, the same letter wow, is going to reappear, it's going to, it's going to come back on the stage a little bit down the road when we learn some, some matra. So far we have learned only one matra. Aki matra is all we know. Next we have to do iki matra, then oki matra and uki matra. When we do oki matra and uki matra, we'll have to employ this guy again. He appears when he's performing the function of uki matra and oki matra. And when, how does he do that? Well, we'll learn when, it, when the time comes. But right now, wow is not being used as a matra. It's just being used, as I said, 
is strictly as a letter. V. It is used strictly as a letter. V. And nothing more than that. That's all it is doing right here. Let's begin. Very simple word we have first one. D, da, da, and wa alif wa. Dava. Dava. Dava is in medicine. There's another one. So here we have noon, no. Pay attention here, no. And then wa and alif are married. They go together here. They're married to each other. And they make a wa sound. No, wa. And then b, na wa. How do we join them? The noon is going to join the wow. Here is our noon. It joins the wow. This is our noon. This is our wow. So the noon goes up to here. But the wow also starts from here. So there is a, there's a little area where they overlap. This area is where they overlap. You see the noon is going up to here. And the wow also starts from here. The noon starts from there. And this part is where they overlap. So it becomes no. Down the road, when we are ready, if we stop right here, if we simply written here like this, and we stop right here, that's a no. It's a oki sound. Oki, oki matra. This is a no. We don't want no. It's not doing. It's not functioning as a matra here. It is with. It is married to alif. It is a wa. No wa, and then b. No wa. No wa. And how would a person know whether it's for, how would a reader know whether it is functioning strictly as a as a letter or it is functioning as a as a, as, a, as a matra? Well, you would know by, by 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 the contact by reading it, if you know the language. So here it is nawab. Obviously, because it is not. It is obviously, this word is not no a uh, b, because there is no such thing as no a uh, b. There is no such word in Urdu language called no a uh, b. This word belongs to alif here. And it is not a matra, it's v, v, wa, alif, wa, wa, alif, wa, noon, and then wa, alif, wa, and b. It has three parts to it, na, wa, b, nawab. Let's write it, shall we? So nawab is like this, na, wa, b. Na, wa, b. If I said you would just simply know it, one more time. You would know that it's not a matra because had it been a matra, it would have been no a uh, b. And you will look at yourself and you will say to yourself, bloody hell. What the bloody hell is no a uh, b? There is no such thing. It must be nawab. Let's do one more. Let's learn a new letter. Let's learn a new letter so we can put one more word here. So we just did wow. Let's learn the next letter which is L. Letter L. Let me erase all of these things so we can have a little bit more room. The next letter we're going to learn looks like this. And it has a name, obviously, they all have a name. And this is the letter L, English letter L. L, it's called L, because it makes a L sound. And in Urdu, this letter is called Lam. What's the name of this letter? Nam, L Lam. The question is, how does the Lam join alif to become la. Well, in Hindi is very easy. You take your la and you put a matra. Aki matra, you're done. But what to, how, how the bloody hell are we going to join the lam and the alif? The answer is we're not going to join. And yet it's going to look very different. What happens is that this guy gets up and he jumps in his tummy. He gets up and jumps inside the tummy and becomes a la. And when, when he jumps inside the tummy, it also becomes a little bit slanted, it's at an oblique angle, it's no longer straight. You could write it straight, but it will look very strange. It's not wrong, but it's just weird. La. This is la. And the word that I was about to write is this, very simple, very straightforward word. You already have a la. You have a, oh, why don't we continue with this thing? Or maybe not. We don't have the room. Let's continue here. So here is our la. And then another la. Lal. Lal is in red. The color red. Here's another one, which is a little bit more tricky. I'm going to erase all of this thing. This is Lal, is in red. So here we have Lam, Meme, and then Ba. 
somehow we have to figure out how to combine them. Le, me, ba. Obviously it's not a le, me, ba. Le and the me are pronounced together. Lamba. Lamba is in long. Lengthy. Lamba. I'm going to wonder if me is going to be half in Hindi. I'm not sure. I'm going to write the full one right now because I don't know. So here's our le. Lum, ba. But how do we combine them here? So what's going to happen is this. Pay attention. We talked about it before. When we learned the letter meme, the first day we talked about it, what happens to it when it joins the other guy. So instead of starting from the top and going down like this, when we, instead of starting from the top, when we know that it's about to join something, we start from the bottom. Right here, that's a mer. And then ba is very straightforward, you just join the ba. What about lam? What about lam? We did the mo and the ba. How is lam going to join this thing? It's very straight. You just join the lam. And it looks something like this. Lam, ba. Pala. Lam, ba. Oh, we wrote it already. Lam, ba. It means long. Let's introduce the other letter. The next letter we're going to learn is we have the lam. Let's learn this letter. This is called the letter has a name obviously. It is called Z. And it looks just like J, just like J, but it has a dot. Remember we wrote down J, it has no dot. This is Urdu letter G. J, we just learned it. This is Z, it has a dot underneath it. And with the dot, it's pronounced Z. Because apparently this sound does not exist in all of India, and a lot of people, a lot of Indian pronounce J instead of Z, and they had no letter for Z. So when they want to write Z sound instead of J sound, they improvise. What do they do? They improvise. They take the letter, they take the letter of Z, and to remind them that this is a Z and not a J, they put a dot underneath it, and it becomes a Z. Let's write some words, shall we? Involving the letter Z. Here's the first one. Ba, za, r, bazaar, bazaar, ba. Za, R. Remember to put a dot. Bazaar. There's another one. Z, Ba, No. Zaban. Z, Ba, No. Zaban is in language. Zaban. Let's learn the last letter here. This is how we write for in Urdu. It's called Fe. The name of the word, name of the letter is Fe. It has a dot underneath it, and you write it this is like this Fe with the dot. Without the dot, if you don't put a dot, if you just put it like here. That would be equivalent of pe and don't trust me here. And I know those of you who are here to learn Urdu, you don't know what the hell this is, but I'm talking to the Urdu readers and they are learning Hindi. So this is how we, without the dot, without the dot, this letter represents pe. You see how similar it sounds, pe. And fur. So this is their fur, and again to them to remind themselves that this is a fur and not a pearl, they put they take this they borrow this little dot, they improvise it, and they put it here just to remind themselves that I'm dealing with a fur and not a pearl. Similarly, I'm dealing with a zo and not a j. So we have fur. Let's see what we can do. We have three of this letter here. We did the lam, we did the ze, we did the fe. This is called fe. This is called ze. This is called lam. 
Let's write some words, shall we? Well, when I say some words, I only have two, left, two words here involving four. Actually, only one word is what I have. So here we, here we go. Wa, and how does the fe join the alif? We never talked about it. How does fe join alif? It's very simple. You take your fe and you join it with alif. Here's our fe, and you want to join it, so you just join it. Except when it joins it, it no, it no longer has the sharp angles, it becomes circular. Fa. This is Fa. Wo, Fa, Te, Wo, Fa. Wo, Fa, Te, Wo, Fa. Wo, Fa is in uh, passing away of somebody, somebody dying, passing away, a death, Wo, Fa. Unki Wo, Fa, Te, he passed away. Mere walid ki wafat ho My father passed away. Let's do one last one, shall we? This is a tricky one. Okay, last one and then we'll call it a day. I don't know which letter, which words I did and which, which words I did not do. I think we did lamba. I hope so. Lamba. Lam, ba. We did it. Which means long. Lam. But I think, yeah, we just did it. Let's do the next letter, very next word, very last word. So first I'm going to write the letters. So here we have the, here we have le, and then wa and alif are married to each other. We're looking for a wa sound. And then we have re, which makes a re sound. So when you write them in Hindi, of course, you have to write the other way, uh, all other way. So this is our the. So we can write a ta, then we have a la, we can write a la, wa is very straightforward, wa, and this is our re, this is our ra. What do you suppose it becomes? It becomes talwar, ta, la, wa, ra, talwar. The question is, how the bloody hell do you put them together? Let's learn it, shall we? So ta is going to join the l, a lam rather, like this, tal. But I did not do a very good job. This lam, I should have known ahead of time what's going to happen next. You have to know ahead of time what's going to happen next. And since had I known ahead of time, I wouldn't have drawn so low. This is our lam. I drew it too low. This is our t and the l. And now we put a wa. And wa. But the reader has to know that this alif, the reader has to know that rather this wa, the reader has to surmise from the context that this wa is married to the alif. And it's tal, wa, ra. One more time. Tal, wa, ra. The reader would know that it is not. The reader will know. The reader would know that the wa does not belong to li lam. Wa, the reader would know that wa does not belong to lam because had it belonged to lam, it would be low. It's an oki matra and it would have become talo ara. Again, there is no such thing as talo ara. The word is talwar, as in sword. As in sword. We're going to stop right here. I think we did everything that we had on our list. So, what's the idea here? What's the game plan? What are we going to do next? It's our second day. On the third day also, tomorrow also. We're going to learn few more letters, and so far, as I said already, we are dealing with only Aki Matra. We are very limited. We do not know how to produce the sound of E, O, or U. We can produce the sound of B and a Ba, but we don't know how to write B or a Bo or a Bu. We know how to write K. We can convert K into a Ka, but we don't know how to write Ki, Ko, or Ku. We have to learn three more matras. But before we do learn any of the other three matras, tomorrow we're going to learn few more letters. I want to have on our list at least 20 letters so that we have a little bit more flexibility in putting the words together. And then once we learn the matras, first first matra we're going to learn, or the second matra, we already learned the first one, which is the Aki matra. The second matra we're going to learn is Iki matra. And once we learn Iki matra, and once we have about 20 letters, then we can put together some more interesting word. These are words so far that we're dealing with are very babyish word, they're very baby word, childish word. 
We want a little bit, we want to be able to write a little bit more interesting words, but we are very limited in our vocabulary, in our ability. So tomorrow we're going to learn a few more letters, and then after that, on day number four, we're going to learn Iki Matra, and then the real game will begin. You understand? All right. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye now.